shipyards, mining, and steel factories. But far away from its urban industry, Poland also possesses a natural beauty to rival any country in Europe. The Carpathian Mountains, which mark Poland's southern border with Czechoslovakia, form a vast and enchanting landscape. The highest peaks are the Tatras, where steep granite walls rise above thick pine forests and fertile valleys. The entire Tatra region has been designated a national park. Within its protective confines, there's a world of natural beauty waiting to be explored. Mountain streams, hiking trails, and hundreds of lakes dot the landscape. The largest of these lakes is Morske Oko, which is surrounded by rugged peaks. Morske Oko means Eye of the Sea. The name is traced to local legend, which claims that the lake is connected to the Adriatic Sea by underground passageways. In fact, when the breeze blows just right and the sunlight dances on the water, Morske Oko does seem to have some magic about it. Lots of tourists from neighboring countries come here, drawn by the fresh mountain air and unique scenery. In fact, the international border runs right along the top of the Tatra range. Northern slopes are Polish, southern ones are Czech. At the foot of the Tatras lies the popular resort of Zakopane. It was originally just a small, sleepy mountain village, but now it welcomes more than two and a half million visitors a year. The Carpathians are divided into a number of smaller chains by several mountain passes and rivers. A spectacular example is the dramatic Dunyets River Gorge, which cuts its way through the Pinyenas. A great way to enjoy the scenery is with a raft trip down the river. The rafts are hollowed out tree trunks and carry about a dozen people. They're guided by local mountaineers dressed in the colorful outfits of their ancestors. The three hour trip is like a fairy tale cruise. About a third of Poland's population lives in rural areas. Over half of the land is used for farming, most of it for grain such as wheat, barley, and rye. Seventy-five percent of Polish farms are privately owned, like this one at the foot of the Tatras. This region is considered to have the best farmland in the country. World War II was not the first time that foreign invaders entered Poland uninvited. Defending her land and way of life from attacking armies has been a recurring theme throughout Poland's history. These ruins are a testament to that legacy.
They're called the Eagle's Nests and were originally castles built in the 14th century to defend Poland's border. There are 14 medieval fortresses along the Eagle's Nest Trail, beginning near Krakow and stretching to Czestochowa. While Warsaw is the heart of modern Poland and Krakow is its historic and cultural center, Czestochowa claims the honor of being the nation's spiritual capital. Every year, hundreds of thousands of people make a pilgrimage here. Their destination is the church and monastery of the Pauline Fathers, founded in 1382 on Bright Hill. This also happens to be the home of Poland's most sacred icon, the Black Madonna. In 1665, when nearly all of Poland was being overrun by invading Swedish armies, this monastery somehow repelled the attack. This success was attributed to the presence of the Black Madonna's portrait. The scars on her cheeks were said to have come from the sword of an enemy soldier who tried to steal the painting. Legend has it that when he couldn't move the portrait, he slashed the face with his sword, drawing blood from the painting's wounds. Over the years, the monastery has had several additions, including this tower, which overlooks the entire town, as well as the surrounding countryside. Assumption Day in August attracts the largest crowds of the year. Many of the pilgrims make the journey entirely on foot, sometimes walking as long as nine days. Ninety-five percent of Poland's population is Roman Catholic, so this is one of the nation's most popular ceremonies. Sadly, Poland's natural and historic beauty is threatened by a level of pollution which is believed to be the worst on Earth. The Polish Academy of Sciences reports that a full third of the population lives in what they call environmental disaster areas. In Krakow, acid rain is destroying the historic sandstone buildings, and the Vistula River is generally considered a sewer, carrying everything from industrial to human waste. When we return, we'll visit the cities of the Baltic and the birthplace of solidarity.